On April 23, 1348, King Edward III of England proclaimed the Order of the Garter on the feast day of St. George, the patron saint of England. Originally called the most noble order of the Garter, it was conceived as the highest award for chivalry in the age of knights. Today, the order still exists, but ranks behind the Victoria Cross and the George Cross in the hierarchy of British medals. As you may expect, the Order of the Garter comes from an incident concerning a woman's garter, a mini belt that holds up one's stockings. Legend has it that King Edward III picked up a garter belonging to the Countess of Salisbury, Joan of Kent, when it fell to the floor during a ball being held in Calais, France. Legend has it that other attendees snickered at the poor woman, but Edward gallantly returned the garter to the Countess, saying, on y soit qui mal y pense. Shame on him who thinks ill of it. This apocryphal utterance has become the motto of the Order of the Garter. This event occurred around the time that Edward was trying to claim the crown of France as his own. An alternate version of the origin of the Garter as a symbol of chivalry concerns King Richard I, who supposedly had his men wear a garter around their leg in battle during the Crusades of the 12th century, at the behest of St. George the Martyr. St. George was a Roman soldier of Greek heritage that refused to deny his Christian faith and was put to death around 303 AD. And yes, he is the guy that supposedly slew the dragon. The award was given to men that had distinguished themselves in a chivalrous fashion, but only men that had already been knighted. The order is now limited to the monarch, the Prince of Wales, and 24 other members, although a certain number of supernumerary members, royal knights and ladies of the garter, are allowed, with membership in the royal family a requirement. Monarchs from other countries are sometimes admitted to the order, including Japanese Emperor Akihito, the only non-European monarch who is currently a member, and likely the only non-Christian. Only the reigning monarch can admit members to the order. Members are assigned precedence in the royal line. Just in case a member of the Order of the Garter should bring dishonor on the order, the monarch may degrade that member, effectively expelling that person from the company of members. This act was used in the past to oust members such as Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany for waging war on Britain, or on British subjects deemed to have committed a high crime such as treason. Women have been admitted in an auxiliary type fashion from the outset, called Ladies of the Garter. King Henry VII admitted his mother, Margaret, but then suspended the practice of admitting women in 1488, which lasted until Queen Alexandra was admitted in 1901 by her husband, King Edward VII. Until 1987, women had not been made companions, which for them meant something less than full membership. As with all things British royalty, certain fancy uniforms, insignia, and pieces of bling are associated with the Order of the Garter, making a rather spectacular display when members are all dressed up in the proper regalia. Each member has his own banner, and the coat of arms of a member can reflect membership in the Order. As a question for my students and subscribers, what do you think about exclusive clubs such as the Order of the Garter, are such things still relevant today? Please share your thoughts on these subjects in the comments section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.